Hello, it's me, and just me. It's only me. Hello, welcome. It's me. Uh, this is all you get. A couple things I want to talk about right off the bat, all right? Listen up, gather around, I'm here, shut up. All right, here's the deal. I got we got a new audio interface because I listened to the podcast last week. I don't, I gotta be honest with you. Who listens to this show? Not me. I'm on it. Why do I gotta listen to it? I listened to it, and I, because I wanted to put it a little clip of it in my video last week, and I was like, something's wrong. And then we also did the Nintendo podcast, so I was like, great, now it's on. In, in the audio is bad in two spots. So I did a hopefully an upgrade. Did a lot of tomfoolery. Wood the pro okay Woods here. Hi Wood. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, I think it sounds good. Let me know if it doesn't. Uh, you can tell this is better. Good. Hopefully it's good. When Will's here, Will's not here. Uh, he stood me up. He's sick apparently. So it's probably better. But he did pull a bunch of stories for me. Also, I have the auto switcher. I don't know. I did something because I'm alone, so it's got no people to switch to. So I don't. Know, I think it's gonna go to this for like a, a minute, and then it's gonna go back to the other one. I don't really know. Things are gonna be. We're, we're flying by the seat of our pants today. Would I was gonna suggest you coming on because I needed a last minute replacement, but we're probably gonna be talking about the same stuff on Thursday. So. Probably best to not do that twice. <laughs> um, anyway, thanks for being here on this wacky and wild Tuesday. We got Caleb Fox. Thank you for the 14 months. Do I have to watch the Fast and the Furious movies before I play Burnout 3? No, you have to watch the Fast and the Furious movies before you play The Crew, which we'll talk about. We're getting... We got Gamescom games to talk about. Hey, look, it switched back. This is probably only going to be here for like 10 seconds. <laughs> uh, we got to talk. Well, there's a lot of Gamescom stuff we got to go over. A lot of games were announced today. But before we talk about that, I'd rather talk about a couple of handhelds that were announced today. Anyway, GD Peterson, thanks for the four months. Is Will okay? Who knows? Oh, he's in the chat. Hey, Wolf Bros. Sorry to hear Will isn't feeling well. Wait, maybe this will be incentive for him to start taking better care of his health. The fat bastard. That was Will talking about himself. Or maybe it's his wife on his account. Jeffrey Sorensen said with 28 months, feel better, Will. Oh, everybody, I'll pass, we'll pass around a get well soon card to everybody. And everybody can sign it and then we'll give it to him next week. How about that? Uh, Golem, thank you for the 200 bits. Put Zim in the chair. He would not stay. More random shit to talk to you guys about. I got a new camera. It's a photo camera. Uh, Pacini, my buddy, uh, got a new camera. And he's like, do you want this? And he gave me like a really good deal on it. So I was like, let me try it. See if I like it. Uh, and I'm going to post pictures that I took with it today and yesterday. And it's fucking cool, man. It's a Fuji film F. No. V100 F. It, it simulates film, but it's digital. And it's cool. I took a lot of cool pictures and I'll post them after the podcast. F150. F no, it's a Ford. I hate you guys. Uh, sleeping toads. Thank you for the 26 months. Get will soon. Well, all right. And Charlie, thank you for the prime and fucking punchline. Thanks for the subscription. Where you post them? Probably on Twitter. You know, that's a good camera. It's fucking cool. Does it have in body image stabilization though? Because. I am a little afraid to take videos with it. The videos do look good. It's only 1080p. All right, we should talk about the news. This is probably going to be a relatively short podcast today because I'm alone. 
there's only one person to speak, and I don't want to do it for that long. So there you go. Uh, if you're curious, the new audio interface is a U Universal Audio Vault. I could have gotten the one with the built-in compressor. Probably should have. I just thought this one looked better and would look cooler on camera. <laughs> Will, now you know how I feel when Bob ignores my messages. Oh, God. Is he still talking? I could actually just pull up just his messages, I think. Oh, no, I can't. I don't have Chatterino. Yeah, why can't I do that? If I disappear, it's because I'm either puking or falling asleep. Okay, well, you're not obligated to be here. You shouldn't be here on your day off. Bob, you're not alone. Drag Hannah down to the podcast. Hannah is definitely listening. And I tried. I tried to get her involved. I mean, we can... It, it could be real quick. Get you, get you in here real quick. Gotta move all that shit that I left in Will's chair. All right. Uh, thank you, Anonymous, for gifting a sub. Let's talk about these new consoles that were announced. Uh, this one just blew my dick off. It's the Lenovo Steam Deck. <laughs> I think this was uh, leaked. Look at this thing. It's it's a uh, why did why did they call it a Steam Deck? Like the it's got Joy Cons. Like, what are we doing here? A few weeks ago, we learned the first reports about Lenovo's Legion Go, the company's planned answer to handheld PC gaming machines like the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally, not to mention the upcoming Aya Neo Kun. Why are we talking about Aya Neo again? What's the Kun? Oh, it's it's like a smaller Windows one. Aya Neo is also coming out with an Android device. That's the only one of their devices that I'm interested in. I should bring that up though. I uh, Neo Android, and we, we can we can add that into the list of handhelds that are coming out. Now the first photos of the device via Windows Report show at least one major feature that should set apart set this apart from the competition switch style detachable controllers. The Legion Go wouldn't be the very first portable PC gaming device with removable controllers. The crowdfunded One X player, which I still don't have. Oh, are you pretending like like you don't exist anymore? I'm pretty sure I pre-order that spot is similar design last year for instance but the f wait oh, i thought the p max portal had detachable jo the p max portal is the one that i think i pre-ordered and that has detachable joy cons too this fucking arts technica article sucks but for other pc based portables have similarly mimicked the p there's this joy con yeah this has joy con sort of the switch that's what this article is saying. Combined with a nice wide kickstand shown in the leaked images, you should be able to give your arms a rest by setting the bulky looking Legion Go screen on a tabletop. Look, the the the, the back looks like a, what do you call it? An OLED switch because it's got the big wide kickstand. One of the things, I'm going, I'm not reading this article anymore. This article has nothing to say other than, look, it's got detachable Joy-Con-like things. One thing I'll say is that it looks kind of just like a Steam Deck. It even has the, okay, it has extra back buttons. On the left Joy-Con, it has the two extra back buttons. On the right Joy-Con, they're horizontal for some reason. That's weird. But it's shaped like a Steam Deck, and it has the bumps like a Steam Deck, like like the grips. The Steam Deck is very heavy, and when you're playing it like in bed, it 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 is cumbersome. So, I think there is something to playing it with the Joy Cons detached in tabletop mode, like you're maybe on a flight and you have it set up in the little uh what do you call it the the tray the tray table, and you have your 
your joy cons at your sides or you're laying in bed you have it propped up on your on your chest and you're playing it that seems cool i don't know how well it'll work it's, it's windows so like how well is the bluetooth from the controllers really going to work compared to that of like a switch where everything's just native in there I don't know. I, I I mean, I'm interested. Hopefully it's cheap. There's absolutely no other information about this. It's Windows 11 based. I don't even think it was officially announced by Lenovo. I think this was uh, a leak. But whatever. I, I, we, we have no idea when it's coming out or, or any of the new information. The Legion Go leaks come just after Lenovo abandoned its button and cooler packed Legion line of Android based gaming phones. These are cool phones. I miss I miss physical buttons in phones. Where are the physical buttons? Is it the whole back? Oh, it's the whole back. This guy's gonna get carpal tunnel. Look at how his fingers are all laid out. Where do we stand on using Switch with an external monitor using direct USB-C cable and skipping the Nintendo dock, says Spider Cool Man? What do you mean? I mean, that'd be great. That'd be awesome. But they don't let you do that. Uh, Charlie Finn says, the definition of throwing everything and the kitchen sink at something. All handhelds merge into one. Yeah, kind of. I'm glad that there's a bunch of stuff coming out that is uh, Windows-based or Steam Deck competitors. I think that there's a lot of room in that market. Even though the Steam Deck is like the guy when you're talking about PC handhelds, I think that it's great to have competition. Uh, and it's great to have all of these big major companies like Lenovo getting involved in it. Uh, it's going to be more money than a Steam Deck, and it's going to be a worse experience because it's Windows. Hopefully, Lenovo, I'm sure they work with Microsoft pretty frequently. Uh, I would assume Asus does, but uh, I mean, maybe these companies know something that we don't. I'm sure they know that there's a lot of room in this market, so that's why they're jumping into it. Maybe there's some Windows 11 tomfoolery going on soon. I can only hope that with the launch of this Lenovo thing, we're going to get some sort of Windows launcher. Otherwise, Lenovo has to make their own. And can they make one that's as good as the Steam Deck or even the Armory Crate that Asus has? Have you looked into the PMAX portal at all? Yeah, that's the one with the attached Joy-Con. Is it out? Because I could have sworn I pre-ordered that. Oh, is it at my apartment? Oh, no. Oh, God. Speaking of that, we'll move on to all of my gripes with the, with, with Ein. But first, thank you, Lee Doug, for the five months. Oh, my God. It's the side character spinoff episode of the podcast. Yeah, dude. This is the beach episode. No banana suits. Hi, Sean. Thanks for gifting a sub. I appreciate that. Uh, and yeah, thanks for gifting a sub. I just had surgery today, and after I woke up, the nurse said, please don't make any important life decisions or buy a Steam Deck. As an Asus ROG ally, I kind of cheered and was kind of shook. What are you talking about? When I woke up from my colonoscopy... I woke up to a text from my manager asking if I wanted to do a sponsorship or something. And I texted him. I immediately just texted him back. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, it sounds good. I'll do blah, blah, And then the doctor came in and said for the next like hour or two, don't like drive, operate machinery or make any like important business decisions. <laughs> I was like, oh, fuck. Anyway, let's talk about uh, Ein 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 Technologies. 
They're the guys who made the Odin. You might remember the Odin as one of my favorite portable emulators that I don't talk about too much because it's a in a weird price area. It was $300. I think now this version, this is the Pro, the Ein Odin Pro. I think this is now like 350 or something. For $300, this was awesome. It got you GameCube and PlayStation 2 and played them really, really good. And it's Android based. This is still one of my favorite consoles. I have to admit, I haven't played it much at all because so many other things came out after that. And I, I again, it's in this weird middle area where like, if I want to play something that's lower powered, I'm just going to play it on like a Miu Mini or a Game Boy or, or a lot of those games are on Switch now. And if it's like GameCube or PlayStation 2, I got those on my Steam Deck and I have all of my Windows games on my Steam Deck. So plus all these other things came out and I had to test all of that stuff. So I'm always busy trying other things. But I do really like this. This thing was awesome and I like Ein. I liked Ein after this because they were new to the market. And I was like, they did something no one else was doing. It's cheap. It's very, very good. The launch is very good. It's very easy to, to work with. This is awesome. And then they came out with the, uh, they announced that they were going to make the Loki, which was Windows based. And that's where my gripes start with Ein. They're in the news right now because they announced the Odin 2, a newer version of the thing that I have in my hands. And I'm going to get it. I don't know which version to get, though. I'm jumping around in my story a little bit because I do want to just get right into talking about the Odin 2. But we will have to talk about the Loki. Because a lot of people made videos on that already. It's out already. Where, where the fuck is mine? We'll talk about that. But we got to talk about the Odin 2. Here it is. You can, as of today back it on Indiegogo. Why are they doing an Indiegogo when they've already had other products? I don't know. They usually do like an Indiegogo and then they do another campaign. They don't need to do this. There's no reason for this. I don't know what to do. So you hmm. early bird Odin 2 base model, $293. A lot of it's in like, what's what's Hong Kong money? HKD? Hong Kong ducats? Anyway, the early bird Odin 2 base model is $293. That's a pretty good deal. I have absolutely no idea how that will perform. And then they have the Pro, which is what I thought would be the one. And that is $370. That's kind of a lot more money. And then they have the early bird Odin 2 Max. Now, remember this guy that I have in my hand? The big the the, the most powerful version of this was just called the Pro. Now they're going up to Max. I'm very confused. And that's it. Oh, there were even cheaper versions. Oh, I could have been an earlier bird and gotten more money off. Oh, I'm fucking pissed, dude. And I, I haven't even pre-ordered it yet, so I'm going to have to wait till after the show. And now all you people are going to pre-order it, and then I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be able to get mine. Can we make a deal that no one's going to pre-order it until the, the show's over? <laughs> What do we got? What's even different about this? Uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor. Cool, man. I know what all of those words mean. It does have an 8,000 milliamp hour battery, which is a lot of battery life. I think the last one was only 6,000. Uh, it looks kind of the same. It's got a big six inch screen. Wi-Fi 7? Is that even a thing? I just got Wi-Fi 6. I don't believe you that Wi-Fi 7 exists. <laughs> 
Android 13. It's got fingerprint module. I, this has a lot of stuff packed into it for a relatively cheap price. And I'm kind of glad it runs on Android because I, I, I do like Android-based consoles. What is this uh, button legend font? This ABXY font. It's atrocious. Wi-Fi 7 does exist, but literally like three things have it. I just got a brand new router, and the cool new thing with that was Wi-Fi 6. Hmm. And then here's another problem with Odin, is that if I get like the atomic purple one that looks the coolest, I will get it later than everybody else. I think they do just the regular black ones the quickest. The original Odin, I accidentally I accidentally got the black one. I didn't know I could choose which color I wanted. Uh, but it came way sooner than all of the other versions. So this time, I'm probably going to do the same thing. I'm just going to get the black one, even though the button legends are fucking ugly. It's got a big old spot for a fan in the back. See, this one only has a little tiny spot for a fan in the back. This one is probably going to run a lot hotter. They also have the super dock for this. I think this is probably a different super dock, but I still have the same super dock from the last one. Oh, God. We froze. For people who are listening after the fact, uh, stream died. I, I, I don't know what happened. Both the cameras uh, froze and the internet went. Oh, and there we fucking go again. Don't do it. Don't oh, okay. I know what happened. I know what happened. That ca that camera won't just won't turn back on. I don't I don't know why. I thought I was about to do it again. If it if it crashes again, this is gonna be a short show because <laughs> I'm not coming back. I think what had happened was I had the Thunderbolt four cable that connects all of this together plugged into a USB-C port and not a Thunderbolt port. Because on this computer, there's there's Thunderbolt right next to a regular USB-C, and I think I made that mistake. But it was working fine. I don't know why it would just fart out like that. Maybe I mean, I'm using a new interface that's plugged in through that same port. I don't know. And that camera now just doesn't work. I don't know. What do you think about this, Will? Thank you. Thank you for thank you for being here. Bob, you gotta turn down all this excitement. My nausea can't handle it. Oh my god. Go to sleep. <laughs> Our theory is that you only had Wi-Fi six. That is what I have. Is that I didn't know that was a problem until Ein announced that they created Wi-Fi seven. Anyway. Where are we? I think I was taken down by Ein for shitting on their, on their products. I think their products are fine. I just want my fucking Loki. Mesh network, baby. This is hardwired. Don't even, don't get me started, man. <sighs> All right, where were we? I was complaining about... You know what else is a problem? Sharing my screen from here to the computer sometimes messes things up. So I'll try to do that less. I'll do that less often. Oh, I hope all my audio settings saved. Sometimes... Oh, no, OBS didn't crash. Sometimes when OBS crashes, it doesn't save anything. All right. So what do I do here, guys, uh, with the Ein Odin 2? I guess I should be getting the Max, right? Because I got to make a video, and why not make it on the best one? But that's so much more money than I paid for the Odin 1. If I were to get one that was the a comparable price, it would be the base model. But that's not cool. But the Max is so much more money. All right, so uh, I'll show the screen. 
Or maybe I won't. Maybe I won't because the fucking button doesn't work. <laughs> so. The regular Odin 2 base is 293. I'll say it all again. There we go. Now that works. Uh, the Pro is 370. So we're at 293, and now we're at 370. And the Max is 446. That's a that's oh a little over $150 more than the base model, which sounds like a lot. Get all of them to compare. I am not willing to do that. I am willing to get exactly one of them and judge all of them based on that one. <laughs> so I only got the Odin Pro, and they had also had three tiers of that, and the Pro was the top one. That's why I'm also really mad about the naming convention here, because the Pro should be the top one if that's what it was the last time. They shouldn't change the naming convention. I think the mid-tier is a good way to go. So what even is the difference? Oh, here we go. We have it right here. We have... Okay, we have nothing. Here it is. Oh, wait. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, RAM. Okay, RAM is, a, is, a, is the difference. <clears throat> RAM and storage. Storage, I don't care at all. I'm putting a micro SD card in there. So they all have the same processor. Except then what the hell is this? CPU, it says one gold plus 3.2 gigahertz. Four gold, 2.8 gigahertz. Three silver. Does that mean it has all of those? Anyway, RAM, you got 8 gigabytes, 12 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes. So you're paying for the RAM. But also storage is 128, 256, and 512. But that, again, the storage, I really don't care about. I'm I'm putting ROMs on here, and that's basically it. It's Android only, so who gives a shit? The extra RAM could be good for the new Windows on Android stuff that's been more popular. I'm not doing that. Not even a shot. I might just get the mid-tier. But again, I want this thing when it comes out, and usually they do the expensive ones first. Is it possible to get the 16 gigabyte and then purposely limit the device to only use eight of those gigabytes? Then we might have a good video. I mean, fine. I'll get I'll get the max and be like, this is the most expensive Android. This is the mo this is the most powerful Android device. Wow. Whatever. 1080p screen. I don't need to read any of the rest of this bullshit. Uh, let's talk about why I'm mad at at Ein. because they announced the Loki. Pretty soon after they dropped the, the original Odin, they announced the Loki. The Loki was their Windows based device. Get it? Odin, Loki, you, the Norse gods, you know, your Marvel and whatever. The Loki came out. It's out. It's out. I'm going to talk about this a little more in depth whenever I inevitably make a video. But I didn't really, I mean, I pre-ordered it f when they announced it. I, I, I pre-ordered two Lokis, actually, because there was a million tiers of Lokis. There were like five different tiers. I bought the really cheap one because I thought it was crazy that you can get a Windows handheld for like $300. And then I bought like one of the middle expensive ones. Um, and let's read my emails with them. Now, I don't have any professional correspondence with Ein. I do this all... I, I purchased it myself. I, well, I I purchased it just like any of you guys would. Um, 
So I I purchased it and then I saw everybody else was getting theirs, like like other people were reviewing them. So I thought, wait, I should make sure that I have like the right address because I moved since before I pre that's how long this has been. Last year I pre-ordered this. So I emailed them in June and I said, hey, can the shipping address be updated? I've since moved. And they said, you can change your address when you pay the final payment for the Loki 256. By the way, there is a Loki Mini Pro Intel in your order, which was canceled. You can get a refund or upgrade to another device. Please confirm. This was, I'm, I got the timeline messed up. Because even before that, they canceled one of the devices that I had pre-ordered. <laughs> because they kept... Oh, here it is. The Intel 7305 Loki model has been discontinued and your pre-order for the Loki Mini Intel 7305 will have the ability to get a refund or free upgrade to the Loki Mini Pro 8505 version. All right, dude. Why do you even have to tell me? Just do it. If you accept the upgrade, please reply yes. So I said yes. Yes, please. I replied to that on July 10th. Of this year or last year? Last year. July 10th of last year is when I replied to that. That was the first div Loki that they canceled. Then uh, in June of this year is when I said, hey, man, I changed my shipping address. And then they said, uh, sh yeah, you can change the address when you make the final payment. But you also have another Loki. Remember the, the mini that we told you we wanted you to switch to? We're not making that either. So get another one. And I was like, all right, that's the second Loki now that you've canceled. What other Lokis are coming out? They said, now, Loki Mini Pro AMD, Loki Max, Loki Zero, Loki 128, 256, 512. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 devices. So I said, I would, I looked into it for like 30 minutes because I can't, that doesn't tell me fuck all about any of those devices. So I looked into it and I said, I would like the Loki Zero and the Loki Mini Pro, please. Because I think my whole idea was I wanted the, the the cheapest one and like one that was somewhere in the middle. Hello, Bob. Sorry for my confusion. For my confusion. Do you mean that you want to change the Loki 252 to the Loki Mini Pro in? Do you want to change the Loki 256 and Loki Mini Pro Intel to the Loki Zero and the Loki Mini Pro? I said, yes. And they said, I have sent the invoice. I said, thank you. Here's my shipping address. Oh, I said, thank you. You said I'd be able to change my shipping address. There is no way to change the shipping address once I I paid I, I paid the rest of the order. And there was no way to change the shipping address. So I just gave them the shipping address. And then they sent it back to me and it said, is this correct? It's an email. Just copy and paste it. I said, yes, that's correct. And that was on July 31st. And it's out. And uh, where's my Loki? All of this will make it into the video when I finally make a video on the, on the Loki. But when's that, when's that gonna happen? I'm going to get this fucking Loki and then I'll be I'll be paying for the goddamn Odin 2. It's a scam. They have a ton of my money now because I I'm getting two devices. Anyway, thanks Eric for the 64 months and Gollum, thanks for the 100 bits and Cecil, thanks for the 24 months. We 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 still haven't even finished the first story. I thought this was going to be a quick pod. I mean, technically it was because the stream crashed. Uh, let's talk about 
Atari is apparently back. They've they've come back from the dead. What's wrong? What? Why is is? I need I need like a direct chat log of of what Will's saying. Oh, you guys are making fun because Will's not actually here. You're pretending like he is here and saying that I haven't let him talk this whole time. There's no, there's, there's nothing. It's that I'm, I'm alone. All right. Anyway, here we go. Uh, Atari is back. Yay! Wow. Remember them? Why is, why did that freeze? I'm terrified to touch anything in OBS right now. Atari's classic 2600 console was back as a hundred euro modern day faithful recreation. No, that's not a euro. That's a British pound. Because of Brexit. Did you make your XLR? No. I bought this off of Amazon. Uh, if you're old enough to remember the days when consoles were made of wood and powered by the hopes and dreams of a better future, not me, you might be excited to know Atari is bringing its classic 70s, 80s console the Atari 2600 back as a modern day faithful recreation. Why? And it'll even play original cartridges. That's cool. If you still have some lying around behind your Zimmer frame. What's a Zimmer frame? I'm not this. Oh. <laughs> it's a walker. It's an old people thing. All right. The Atari 2600 Plus as this updated version of the console. Oh, God. Oh, God. Stop. Uh, has been birthed into the world through the frantic conjoining of Atari and PlayOn, formerly Cock Media. Oh, God. And is set to release on 17th of November. These British people do dates weird. It's $130. Which is, if nothing else, cheaper than it would have cost you back in 1977. I think it was really expensive. I think it was like $300 of their money. Of 1977 money. This newfangled update features a couple of modern day revisions, including HDMI output, USB power, and multiple screen resolutions. But the selling point here really, is how close it adheres to the Atari 2600's iconic design, wood panel, frontage, and all. Don't say frontage to me. For your 100 present-day pounds, you get the console, a faithful replica of Atari's original CX40 Plus joystick. A second will cost you an additional 25 US dollars, plus 10 games on a single cartridge. Adventure, Combat, Dodge'em, Haunted House, Maze Craze, Missile Command, Real Sports Volleyball, Surround, Video, Pinball, and Yars Revenge. Atari's got bad games. This, is, this system, not a great catalog of games. If I needed to go back to a generation to play the games, it, it this would not be the generation. I'd be hesitant to go back to the NES, even. So, like, I get it, and, like, this is a hobbyist thing, and it's cool that it exists. They should, like, lean into the FPGA stuff. They should say that, I mean, it's it's got HDMI output and, and whatever. But they should be like, it's FP. Well, they don't have to say it's FPGA, because it's literally just, they made the hardware. I, I I have no interest in this because I have no interest in Atari games. So Atari 2600 goes for $30 on eBay? Get the fuck out of here. Are you looking at a plug and play? There's no way. $190, you fucko. $76 plus $30 shipping. No. 
every time I see an Atari 2600, it's like $300. So there's that. Anybody get anybody interested? Anybody who watches this at all interested in a, in a, in a home Atari console. It's cool that it plays actual cartridges. I like that. That's the trend now. It's not just plug and play stuff. Not like the, the, the super Nintendo classic. Everybody was trying to copy that for a while. I like that. They're trying to copy analog. Now you could put the whole, the actual cartridge in there. Imagine they release this and all the games are remakes on the level of Resident Evil four. <laughs> Hey, that'd be kind of cool. All right. Let's go through Gamescom as much as we can. Now, Will gave me the IGN article. I'm pulling up the Polygon article because they have YouTube videos that I could play. I don't know if this is in order. I watched a little bit of Gamescom today. There were a lot of announcements. Jeff Keighley hosted it. We we like him. Somebody rushed the stage and said, Bill Clinton, you can't have a Jeff Keighley without a stage rusher. When the 2600 launched, the only way to connect it to a TV with, with rabbit ear antenna to play the original 2600 today, you have to mod it to have RCA out. How the hell did you... Attach it to an to rabbit ear antenna. I did not know that. We got everywhere. It's hard to say exactly what everywhere is based off of the teaser trailer, but there's shooting, driving, explosions, space, and apparently an open world from developer Build a Rocket Boy. Okay. Kind of just looks like a Fortnite sandbox mode. Cool. Dune Awakening. Skip. Hogwarts Legacy. Skip. New Tales from the Borderlands. Skip. Word Song. Former Bethesda Game Studio designer Jeff Gardner and Obsidian Entertainment alums Charlie Staples formed Something Wicked Games and announced Word Song. Spelt all weird like. Okay. I hate when game trailers fade to black. Like 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 they like pulsate fading to black throughout the trailer. All right, this this show no gameplay or anything. I I I don't have any interest in this because you've shown me nothing. That looked like just like Two static images parallaxing. This is from last year? Oh my god. Will, why'd you pull... Will, why'd you pull the one from last year? Oh wait, that's right. I pulled the one from last year. So here's the question. Where is everywhere? <laughs> Fine. I'll go through the IGN article then. Starfield live action trailer. That's what they opened up with. I remember that. I watched that. Uh, that was cool. I wasn't really paying much attention because I'll play the game when I play the game. Then uh, freaking Todd Howard came out and said, hey, I'm Tom Howard. I only come for Gamescom. That's a direct quote. And then Zack Snyder revealed his next bad movie. Uh, and then Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 gameplay trailer shows off the first level, which is an asset swap of the prison from Warzone? 
which is an asset swap of a prison in in probably Modern Warfare 3. Which is what this is. This is Modern Warfare 3, so maybe that makes sense. Anyway, uh, I'm not interested in playing the single player of this game, but supposedly it's having its own war zone. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 fans were treated to an extended look at gameplay from the game's first level, which is called Operation 627. Sure, it was great to see the game in action, but the big news was that it will send players to Verdansk, the setting of the original war zone. Oh. Well, that explains why the prison looked like the one from Warzone. Because it's literally the prison from Warzone. <laughs> Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 will be released on November 10th, 2023. Uh, I'm not going to play this. I will try Warzone at least for a little bit to see if I like it. Uh, Alan Wake 2 Gamescom Showcase features The Dark Place. Alan Wake 2 is set to be released on October 17th, 2023, and Gamescom gave those excited for this new spooky adventure a look at The Dark Place, a dream reality that spawns forth from Alan's own mind. As if that wasn't trippy enough, it will seamlessly integrate live-action footage into the gameplay to show the dreamlike nature of this mysterious place. That's kind of cool. I'm interested. I'm going to play Alan Wake 2. It seems cool. Diablo 4 Season 2, called Season of the Blood. Skip. Mortal Kombat 1 reveals two new fighters. I don't... I didn't see... Yes, I'm older than 17. Thank you, IGN. I didn't see... I, I heard that they announced some Mortal Kombat stuff, but I was doing something, and I tuned it out. Mortal Kombat 1 made its presence felt at opening night live with a new gameplay trailer that showed more of the game in action and revealed that Sindel and General Shao will be joining the roster. Motaro and Shunjinko will also be added as cameo characters. Isn't Sinda... These aren't, like, new characters. Is General Shao different than Shao Khan? Isn't that just Shao Khan? Oh, but he's a general now. This is like pre con Shayo. Is that what we're looking at? Cool, I guess. All right, cool. Yeah, I know these guys. Same guy, Khan is a title meeting king. Uh, okay. Cool, 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 cool. Anyway, Tekken 6. This I might actually play. As long as I can play as the bear. Alongside a new trailer, Bandai Namco revealed at Gamescom opening night live that Tekken 8, did I say 6? I meant 8. There's been 8 of these. Will officially be released on January 26, 2024 for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and S, and PC. We also caught a glimpse of the game's single-player mode that looks to honor the old and wonderful days of the arcade scene. I'm interested in this game a little bit. I played a very little bit of Tekken, and it is a fun game. Pretty simple in terms of fighting games. Uh, anyway, Assassin's Creed Mirage's latest trailer focused on 9th century Baghdad. I hope there's a demo for this, because I am a little interested in Assassin's Creed Mirage. I haven't been interested in any big-budget AAA games in a really long time. So that's saying a lot. I will not pay $70 for the game. I, I just want to try a demo, though. Assassin's Creed Mirage revealed a new gameplay trailer at Gamescom uh, opening night live, and it showcased a 9th century Baghdad and featured a full Arabic voiceover. Mirage stars Basim, a character who first appeared in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and it is set to be released on October 5th, 2023. I like the linear aspect of the game. Like, at least more linear than the last couple of Assassin's Creed games. Uh, so I, I would like to try it. Cyberpunk 2077 2.0 is coming to the base game alongside Phantom Liberty. New gameplay trailer revealed. This looks cool. Uh, I'm not going to show the trailer. Uh, I'm not going to list off the stuff it has. 
but it looked kind of cool. It, looked, it, it didn't look like cyberpunk. It looked like I thought it was Cyber Shadow, to be honest. Uh, but it looks cool. Uh, if you liked cyberpunk. Or if you played Cyberpunk, if you are at all interested in Cyberpunk and where it was turned off by all of the brokenness, I think it's mostly fixed now. I just didn't like Cyberpunk at its core. Sonic Superstars finally has a release date, does it? Sega has revealed that Sonic Superstars will be released on October 17th, 2023. Fans of the Blue Blur and Friends were also treated to a new gameplay trailer that showed off local co-op with up to four players... And the online free-for-all battle mode. Okay, I'm pissed off about this. The game does look good, and the couch co-op looks cool. This is a trailer focusing on the multiplayer, which is an interesting thing to, like... It's an interesting pitch for your game when it's not online multiplayer. It's required that you're sitting next to the person when you're playing this game. So making a whole trailer about the multiplayer seems weird to me. Also, we have a whole trailer on the multiplayer, and we still don't know what happens when one character gets too close to the edge of the screen. Can I be playing with someone and stand in the beginning of the level and have them finish the whole level? What would happen to me? Would the screen just zoom out? How far can the screen zoom out? Will I turn into a bubble like in New Super Mario Brothers? Will I just die? Will I be like Tails where you're just off screen? It's local only, and they confirmed that. But there is an online battle mode, which looks dumb. So I like this. I just, that's like a really core mechanic that we don't, know how it works yet and if it's shitty then the whole game is going to be shitty anyway sonic frontiers the final horizon update coming this year frontiers is getting a free update called the final horizon later this year and it will add a new story new playable characters and new challenges that's crazy i didn't get very far in sonic frontiers i would like to i kind of got a uh, what do you call like fatigued by the open world? Like I'm just kind of I just want to play the levels, and you have to like grind to like open the levels, and that completely turned me off. I just want to play the levels, and I didn't get very far at all. But in this trailer, he turns into supersonic. Are you telling me that there's no supersonic in Sonic Frontiers? They're supersonic, right? It's not like they're adding supersonic in this in this version. All right. Well, anyway, Quantic Dream announced Dustborn at Gamescom. All right, cool, dude. Uh, thank goodness you're here. Is a new game by studio behind Untitled Goose Game. I didn't hear this. They're adding supersonic level two. Get the fuck out of here. Is that a, is that an actual thing, or are you are you drawing a correlation to Dragon Ball? He turned to supersonic during boss fights. Oh, how many boss fights? What is this game? Untitled Goose Game publisher Panic Inc. has announced Thank Goodness You're Here, a quirky game with a distinct hand-drawn art style and a wonderful wackiness that needs to be seen to be believed. In the trailer, we catch a glimpse of someone's pants falling down while they are looking at a sign that says Normal Milk, someone bouncing off someone else's butt, and much more. All right. That's cool. The art style looks like that show Uncle Grandpa. So it looks like the game is a... It's an adventure game which is ma comprised of a series of mini games. And also has a lot of cutscenes, it looks like. I mean, Untitled Goose Game was great. 
So I'm interested. All right, Little Nightmares 3, cool. Uh, Black Myth Wukong trailer is a very welcome new look at action-packed gameplay. Uh, did this game come out? Is this a different? I thought Wukong was out. Is this a different one? Black Myth Wukong? This is the one where you play as a monkey that looks like a guy. Uh, I am not that interested in this game. You might be thinking of Wulong. I am thinking of Wulong. Is that not this game? But do you play as a monkey guy in this game too? No, you don't. You're just a guy guy. Okay. Where did my tab go? All right, whatever. Uh, Marvel Snap is now available on Steam. Cool. I saw a lot of Twitch streamers were paid to play it today. Medieval Fighter Warhaven. Is this the one where, like... The Medieval Fighter Warhaven will be released on September 21st, 2023. Warhaven features 16 versus 16 multiplayer battles. And in our hands-on preview, we said encounters were like a chaotic, jumbled pile of sword, shield, and cannonballs that's almost always pure mayhem. I don't know how I feel about that. No gameplay in this trailer. Okay. Uh, Grand Blue Fantasy, Skip. Nightingale uh, opening night live trailer. Feature reveals further early access release date delay. Which one's this one? We received a new trailer for the Victorian gas lamp fantasy themed shared world survival crafting game Nightingale. I remember this game now. This game looked kind of cool, but it's being delayed again. Uh, till. From this year, from this autumn to February 22nd, 2024. This game had a cool art style. I don't know anything else about it or if any of the rest of it looks any good. Uh, ex ex Expeditions, a Mud Runner game. Is Mud Runner the game that I like? Edge Runner. They're the same thing. Snow Runner. That's it. Those games are actually very good. SnowRunner developer Saber Interactive has announced Expeditions, a Mud Runner game, where the focus of the game is on the dirty but wonderful activity of off-roading. Alongside driving off-road with a variety of vehicles, players will also be able to use drones to get a better view of your surroundings and a metal de de a metal director to find hidden treasure. You mean detector guy? All right. Man, I'm trying to freeboot your article here. That's a big ass drone. These games are really good. I have done off roading before, and the game actually does a really good job simulating it. At least the one that I played. Um, it's 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 sick. I I I am actually a little interested in this. Depends on the cars that are in it. That's kind of cool. Now I'm just sitting here watching the trailer. Uh, Stormgate's last latest developer update. I don't care. Uh, Crimson Desert gameplay trailer shows off tons of new mechanics. I don't know this game. It's been quite some time since we've seen or heard from Pearl Abyss Crimson Desert, but uh, the wait is now over at Gamescom Open Night Live. A lengthy gameplay trailer was revealed that gives a good idea of what players can expect from the game, including sword combat, toppling structures, bow and arrow fighting, fighting on horseback, fishing, hijacking carriages, petting dogs, and much more. One of these medieval-like trailers had, like, the guy falling from really high up, and it looked like he was in, like, a virtual world. It was very strange. And was this it?
I think this was it. Yeah, there's some weird fantasy shit going on in this one. I think he, yeah, I think he like, no, it doesn't show it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, what is this about? Oh, you're like, re okay. Oh, we got Tears of the Kingdom going on. That was kind of like a weird jump in style. All right, whatever. Uh, Age of Empire 4. Bulletstorm VR. Okay. Killing four, Floor, Killing Floor 3. Armored Core 6. Oh, we got a launch trailer. When's this game coming out? I talked about this the other day. Um, from Software, right? They're making this Armored Core 6. Um, they... Everybody loves From Software right now. Uh, this is going to be a much different type of game than what everybody loves them for. But there are some very dedicated Armored Core fans that want a traditional Armored Core game. And there are some very uh, new From Software fans that would like uh, a, a more modern, better controlling game. I am one of those guys. <laughs> I tried Armored Core like a long time ago and it was very complicated. I could not get into it. Uh, I assume this will be similarly complicated. I don't want it to be though. I want a mech game that feels good. Elden Core. Yeah, I don't want to have to, like, flip the controller upside down to be able to steer correctly. You know what I mean? It look, it looks sick. Last Epoch. Don't know what that is. The Crew Motor Fest. All right, listen. I don't know if Will's still here, but he would, he would, he would like this a lot. There he is. Uh, listen up. This is, oh, they don't even have any information about this game. That's how little they cared. Um, so, I don't know what's going on with this game. The only thing that interested me is that they have a Battle Royale mode. It is 36 players, I believe. And to knock them out, you smash into them. Kind of like Burnout. Now, my problem with it is that I don't think it's a race. I think it's just a demolition derby. But I hope it's a race. A 36... Ooh, you can get a Jeep in this. A 36-player... Oh, you could off-road in this? And smash in other people? A 36-player race where you knock the other people out? Sounds awesome. Like a Burnout-style Battle Royale sounds awesome. So I am once again interested in that. Fort Sol Solace, whatever, Lords of the Fallen, whatever, Genshin Impact, Concert, Reveal Trailer, whatever, Honkai Star Rail, kind of want to try that, Zenless Zone Zero Trailer, that, okay, what is that? That's a cool name. This looks cool, and I'm not usually a racing guy, neither am I. I'm playing Star Rail right now. Oh, my God. Oh, there's another Hoyoverse game. Zenless Zone Zero. Oh, is this the one that's like Future Punk? Yo, they got furries in this one? What is the gameplay like in, in Zenless Zone Zero? Is it like... Genshin. I refuse to play Star Rail because they bombarded my YouTube videos with ads. Like sponsored, ad, like like. Oh yeah, this looks good. Zenless Zone Zero. I remember seeing this. It's like Genshin, but Future Punk, and I like that a lot more. When do I play it? And and it has furries. Uh, 
Uh, did you know that Natasha is an underworld doctor? What does that even mean? That didn't have a date at all. Didn't say anything. Payday 3 official trailer. Ice T's in it? All right, I'll have to watch that later. Delta Force? What is that? Is that a VR game? It's from the ad? Oh, God. Homeworld 3 story reveal trailer? Oh, okay. I think I think we're we're wrapping up Gamescom here. Oh, Delta Force looks kind of cool though. Looks like old school Rainbow Six. Okay, then they pull out a bow for no reason. Okay, and then they got fucking drones that come out of their wrists. All right, it, it, it looked like a like a good Rainbow Six style game, and then and then they got nutty with it. And now he's shooting a tank with a with an AR fifteen. What's the new console? You missed it. All right, whatever. That that looked good for a hot second. Mandrogora Warhammer. We're getting to the bottom of the barrel here. All right, that's it. That's all. That's all we got for Gamescom. That's all Gamescom had for us. Uh, that was okay. That was an okay showing. Anything that you were interested in that I should have talked about? Where do we go from here? Migs Lunar Strike, thanks for the 28 months. Scary Cooper, thanks for the prime. How you guys doing? Good to see you. Original Delta Force was released in 1989. I knew I knew that name. Did it look anything like that? 1998 or 1989? Here we go. Here's the original Delta Force. Give me this game. Where the, where's the drones coming out of his wrist here, huh? This looks like Rainbow Six, goddammit. Where are the bad guys? <laughs> wow, that was a terrible animation. I miss tactical shooters. I want my tactical shooters back. Rainbow Six is not cutting it anymore. They they went they took a hard turn. It was tactical tactical, but kind of like Ghost Recon. I didn't really like Ghost Recon that much. All right. I'm going to blast through a couple more stories because uh, I wanted this to be quick. Xbox 360 Marketplace is shutting down. Oh, no. It'll close July 2024, but you can keep playing your favorite games, according to Microsoft. This November will mark 18 years since Xbox 360 launched. It was a generation-defining console that invited many to jump into gaming for the first time and connect with friends around the world. Over the years, we've heard stories of players who found a lifelong love of games, starting with the likes of Cameo, Gears of War, Fable 2, whatever the fuck. Let's get to the point. As we head into 2024, we change. We have a change to share about the Xbox 360 experience. On July 29th, 2024, Xbox will stop supporting the ability to purchase new games, DLC, and other entertainment from the Xbox 360 store on the console and on the Xbox 360 Marketplace at marketplace.xbox.com. Related to this change, the Microsoft Movies and TV app will no longer function on Xbox 360, which means TV and movie content will no longer be viewable on your Xbox 360 after July 29th, 2024. Between now and July 2024, you can continue purchasing games and DLC from the Xbox 360 store and at the Xbox 360 Marketplace. 
This change will not affect your ability to play Xbox 360 games or DLC you have already purchased. Xbox 360 game content previously purchased will still be available to play. Not only the Xbox 360 console, but also Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S device via backwards compatibility. Uh, fine, whatever. Uh, they, they, it had to. It's it had to close at some point. No, it didn't. It doesn't have to close. They could just keep making the, the the games available i don't know how i feel about it hopefully they get better at making all i mean they've already done very good at making xbox 360 games backwards compatible uh hopefully they finish up the list they get a, a couple more games that are backwards compatible before they remove the ability to purchase those games there are a lot of great uh xbox 360 games that are currently available on on the marketplace one of them is red dead redemption it's the only way you're going to be able to play it at 4k is by buying the xbox 360 version of the game so purchase it now or just buy you if you buy physical, you put it in the system, and it'll. I'm sure it'll still download all of the stuff. Hopefully, the games you have physically, you put it in the cartridge, and it'll it'll do the Xbox enhanced stuff and the backwards compatible stuff. Hopefully, all of that will will be unaffected. It says this will not affect your ability to play Xbox 360 games or DLC you have already purchased. So, make sure you buy all of the stuff that you need to buy. Can I still buy and play Xbox 360 backwards compatible titles? There is no impact to purchasing or playing backwards compatible titles, uh, uh, Xbox 360 titles. After July 29, 2024, you will still be able to purchase hundreds of great backwards compatible Xbox 360 or and original Xbox games and DLC on Xbox One and Series X and S. Oh. Oh, you just can't do it on a physical Xbox 360. I care about this much less. Okay, so this is more incentive for them to finish out the rest of the library and make sure that all of their stuff is going to end up being uh, backwards compatible. Charles Martinet dies. Just kidding. It seems like it. When they showed... When all the news dropped, Nintendo even... I think I read their statement first. And it said important news about Charles Martin. And I was like, oh, no. And then they're like, we fired him. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that's better than what I thought in my head. Anyway, Charles Martin, the voice actor uh, of Nintendo's beloved Mario character and other stuff, is stepping down. Is he? Charles Martinet, the original voice actor of Mario's uh, Nintendo game since the 90s, is stepping down. Nintendo of America confirmed Monday that Martinet will now serve in the role of Mario ambassador, traveling around the world to promote the beloved plumber, signing autographs, and performing Nintendo character voices. It's been a privilege working with Charles to help bring Mario to life for so many years, and we want to thank and celebrate him, Nintendo said in a statement. In addition to being the original voice of Mario, he's also voiced Luigi, Wario, while Luigi, in the video games. While he did not voice Mario in the recent movie, he did have a small role as Mario's dad, and I liked that role, and he did a good job. In, question, in a question and answer session at a Canadian gaming and comics expo two years ago, Martinet told the audience, I want to voice Mario until I drop dead. Holy shit. In response to a fan's question, according to... So he didn't step down. In response to a fan's question, according to a gaming blog, The Game Carter. Crater. The Game Crater. But he added, if someday I think I am no longer capable of doing it, I will tell Nintendo to look into finding someone else. Oh, okay. Maybe he did step down. Nintendo did not give... Did not give say why Martinet is stepping down or who would replace him as Mario's voice. It might have been a mutual thing. They did confirm that it is not him in Super Mario Wonder. There are, in fact, new people voicing Mario and Luigi. So he voiced both of them. Now there are 
separate voices. I don't think we know what Luigi sounds like yet. I'm a little concerned. I think whoever they got to play Mario now in Wonder sounds exactly like Martinet. Because I was fooled into thinking that it was Martinet. I thought maybe they were just using old recordings of Martinet. So, un unless the report was wrong, that was Game Explain, who got confirmation that it was two different voice actors. So, I mean, whoever they got from Mario is doing a great job. I'm a little concerned about how Luigi's going to sound, but whatever. I think that it's fine that Charles Martinet is stepping away. I think he was, he was getting, you know, he's getting old and his voice is changing a little bit. I'd rather them get a replacement sooner rather than just have the name attached to the voice and have them just run it into the ground like what, I mean, James Earl Jones is the iconic Darth Vader voice, but the last couple of things he did Darth Vader with probably shouldn't have been doing Darth Vader. <laughs> Charles Martinet is voicing Luigi in the Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon remaster. Isn't that just the same voice lines? Aren't they just not changing the voice lines? I mean, a lot of people can do Mario. I'm sure it'll be fine. Ya wa wahoo. They should have gotten me. What's the new one? He, the new thing he says. Wowie zowie. That's the new thing that he says. See, I could do it too. Uh, how does Red Dead Redemption run on Switch? Will wrote rub on Switch. I watched this video that Digital Foundry did. It's very good. Uh, the long story short is that it runs very good. It's locked at 30 frames per second with it drops down to the high 20s during specific in-game moments. It's it seems like it runs great. It seems like there's a little bit better anti-aliasing in this than even in the Xbox One uh, backwards compat version, judging by their comparisons. Um. I would still suggest just playing it on Xbox if you have it on Xbox. It looks like the PS4 version also has slightly better shadow details. Otherwise, the Switch port is a fine port. Digital Foundry did note that they can get the game running at 60 frames, I think, on the Switch. And it runs just fine. So there's really no reason why they couldn't have made it run 60 on the Switch or even the PS4 version. The PS4 version doesn't run at 60 either. Um, but there could be some unintended things that happen when you up the frame rate. Like I think they said in in certain games, it was either Tears of the Kingdom or um, Dark Souls. I think they said that weapon degradation was tied to the frame rate so it would they would degrade much faster there could be some weird things that are tied to the frame rate that we don't quite that we they, they wouldn't have been able to find out immediately they would have had to play through the whole game uh it requires an overclock to maintain 60 okay not the ps4 version though i'm sure the ps4 version would be just fine Speaking of running well, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk has a 60 frames per second mode for the Switch. That's crazy. Well, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk is like a Dreamcast game. It looks and plays like a Dreamcast game. I played that. It's very good. It was running at f almost 400 frames a second on my computer without me realizing it. Kingdom Hearts had issues with a boss when they upped it to 60 frames per second. All right, speaking of games running bad, uh, Metal Gear Solid Collection, only 720p, 30 frames per second on Switch, contains content disclaimer. 
uh, Konami now says that only the Switch version runs at a lower resolution, with Konami telling IGN that the PS4, 5, Series X, and PC versions all have a target of 1080p resolution and 60 frames per second. So I guess it's not going to hit that all the time. It's still not clear if the target is a hard commitment or simply the maximum performance the games will reach on those platforms. It's definitely not a hard commitment. It's definitely what they're trying to hit, and they're just they're just being diplomatic. I, I'm I'm sure it's going to be mostly hitting those targets, but they're 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 giving themselves some wiggle room. Uh, so yeah, on the Switch, it looks like it's going to be 720p 30, which sucks. That's bad. It should be at minimum 60. If it's going to be 60 on other consoles, why not? You got a P, you got a PS1 game. And two PS2 games. Should it be that hard to get a PS2 game to run at 60 on on, on a Switch? I got Metal Gear 3 running great on this Ein Odin right here. I don't remember what frame rate it was. Honestly, it was probably 30 frames. Bob, didn't these games run at 60 per second on PS2 back in the day? I don't know. I have no idea. If if I got it running pretty good on this I node and that's in my hand that it wasn't supposed that's not supposed to run it good. I don't know why a professionally developed port for the Switch can't hit those targets. That's very sad. If it originally ran at 60 on PS2, that is very sad. Did 60 frames per second exist back then? You know, I think it was the PS3, Xbox 360 days where they just gave up on the 60 frames. Well, there was N64 where they were like, we can't even hit 20. And then there was PS2 when they they hit 60. But no, a lot of games were hitting 30 around then. And then Xbox 360 and PS3, they were like, fuck it, we're do everything's 30. F0 was 60. Yeah, you got one. Uh, all right. I think I'm done. Oh, we got to talk. There's one. Okay. Okay. Two, two, two big newses that we have to, that we have to talk about. Uh, Microsoft is selling off the Activision portion of cloud gaming rights to Ubisoft. Is this worldwide or just in the UK? Because this is absolutely baffling to me and very annoying because I want it on Game Pass. That's a whole, the whole, the, from day one, the only reason I was liking the sound of this Microsoft acquisition of Activision was because I wanted Warzone to be available via Game Pass streaming. And this completely ruins that for me. Microsoft's restructuring its proposed Activision Blizzard deal to transfer cloud gaming rights for current and new Activision Blizzard games to Ubisoft. The transfer of rights is designed to appease regulators in the UK that are concerned about the impact Microsoft's proposed $68.7 billion deal will have on cloud gaming co competition. The restructured deal has triggered a new regulatory investigation in the UK that could last until October 18th. To address the concerns about the impact of the proposed acquisition on cloud gaming streaming raised by the UK Competition and Markets Authority, we are restructuring the transaction to acquire a narrower set of rights. This includes uh, executing an agreement effective at the closing of our merger that transfers the cloud streaming rights for all current and new Activision Blizzard PC and console games released over the last 15 years to Ubisoft Entertainment, which is a completely out of left field. The rights will be in perpetuity. This restructured deal means that if Microsoft does close its proposed acquisition, then it will not be able to release Activision Blizzard games exclusively on Xbox Cloud Gaming. 
Microsoft won't be able to exclusively control the licensing terms of Activision Blizzard games on rival services either. Instead, Ubisoft will control the streaming rights to Activision Blizzard games outside of the EU and license titles back to Microsoft to be included in Xbox Cloud Gaming. Ubisoft will compensate Microsoft for the cloud streaming rights to Activision Blizzard games through a one-off payment and through a market-based wholesale pricing mechanism. Okay, this is fucked up. Including an option that supports pricing based on usage, it will also give Ubisoft the opportunity to offer Activision Blizzard's games to cloud gaming services running on non-Windows operating systems. Okay, this is fucking weird, dude. So the rights to Activision Blizzard games for cloud streaming will be completely in Ubisoft's court. So Ubi so when Microsoft has to license those streaming rights from Ubisoft now if this all goes through. So we could still see, see it on Game Pass, but they would have to license the rights to do that from Ubisoft. And this is worldwide, it seems. But this also means we could see like Call of Duty streaming on other platforms, including the Switch. It would just be through Ubisoft Plus. The way I see this, the way I saw this was Microsoft looked at this and they said, the only way we can get this to go through is if we give the cloud streaming rights over to somebody else. Who is the least threatening of all of the cloud streaming services? Oh, Ubisoft Plus. So, okay. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I guess it's good because it, 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 it fixes the competition issue that the EU had, which, which is a valid criticism of, of the merger. Uh... It's just going to be weird. It's going to be weird to see what happens with uh, Activision games via streaming. Will will we be able to do it on on uh, Game Pass? Will we be using Ubisoft Plus to play Call of Duty on a Switch? I don't know. Lastly, I have to see what this is. Razor's making a Razor. Razor's makers team with razor makers to make a razor razor Gillette is making a flagship razor razor there it is oh wow for gamers by gamers should I buy this should I make a video on this All right, uh, no tweet of the week because they changed the name to x.com and I think that's so dumb I never want to think about that website again. But we'll talk to you people real quick if you left a comment on last week's Wolf Den podcast. You might hear it here. Like freaking Raymond Paradis. The exclusion of split screen in modern games, I think, is hurting the future generations of gamers. When I was a kid, I only played games with my younger sister, so games like Forza 6, Minecraft, and the Lego games were staples. Now, when I try to play games with my 10-year-old brother and sister, the only games we can play are those old games. I've even started picking up PS2 games like Medal of Honor and Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. Also, what are some split screen games, new or old, you think I should pick up for them to try? They love playing games together, but I don't think they'll continue playing games if they have to take turns playing Spider-Man Remastered. Okay, this is valid. Definitely Sonic Superstars when that comes out. That seems to be geared for couch co-op. Uh, check out It Takes Two. That's supposed to be one of the best games in the last few years, and it is basically required to play that game split screen co-op um otherwise it's not looking too good 
I was a big fan of Splinter Cell uh, uh, Conviction. And that had a very good, totally separate uh, split-screen multiplayer campaign. And you could also play it online, I think. But uh, I don't know if that's good for a 10-year-old. But no, I think Need for Speed is good. Medal of Honor is good. Oh, okay, well... Rainbow Six Vegas also had a really good split screen, but I mean, that's another one. I don't know if it's good for a 10 year old. Need for Speed's good. Burnout is good. That has a really good multiplayer. Unraveled. Okay, Unraveled. All right, Mike J. File says, This is interesting, but I feel like PC is the best way for games these days. You are forced into a console's set hardware and software, plus physical disks, disks are dying. I like PC because I like Steam now. I just like how versatile using Steam is, and I have a million devices that just so happen to run Steam, and having all my games... Uh, transfer between all those devices and having cloud saves between all those devices just works well for me. I don't like the argument that PCs are better than consoles because for con consoles, you're locked into a specific set of hardware for a given amount of years. I don't like that argument because for one, the console hardware is usually pretty good for the price that you pay for it. And second, most people aren't upgrading their PCs frequently at all. Most people buy a really expensive gaming PC and use that gaming PC for many, many, many years. I used to build computers all the time. And uh, I didn't for the last computer that I got because I was like... Because graphics cards were like impossible to get and it was just easier to, to get a pre-built. So I just did that. Um... Before that, I built a computer and I never upgraded it. And before that, I built a computer and never upgraded it. And before that, I built a computer and never upgraded it. So the idea to the idea of upgrading a PC that you built, it, it, I, I know that people find comfort in that. But in reality, you're not upgrading it often enough to to warrant that f fucking two thousand dollar purchase you just did when it's time to upgrade things also might have changed a lot yes and i'm aware that there are people who are buying the newest graphics card every single time one comes out there's people who are upgrading every single year and you're just dumping money away so i don't i don't like the that argument about pc versus consoles in that regard anyway Carson Curly, okay. Carson Curly, with the announcement of the P new PS5 Slim, do you expect to see an Xbox Series refresh in the near future? No, I don't, because I think they nailed it. <laughs> I think the Xbox Series that we got is all we need. It's that's a nice design. It's compact. They got it. Maybe. A different Series X that's a little slimmer and not like a big rectangle. I don't know. Um, I do think we are still getting a cloud streaming only device from, from Xbox though. Uh, I will also say I was thinking about the PS5 Slim and I don't no, if I buy that the disk drive is detachable anymore. Because in the in the leaked pictures, it looks like that whole like panel could maybe come off and be replaced, but I think that maybe it just might be there. I think that maybe it just it's just you're that's the only one you I think maybe they're like, you know what, the diskless sales aren't that good. We're just gonna sell it with the with the disk drive. Anyway, D. Linton says, Game Freak doesn't need a new Pokemon game per se. They need a new engine for what they are trying to accomplish with the gameplay they are pursuing. Yeah, which means a new uh, which means a new Pokemon game. Okay. Resident 
Elm says, I bought my fiance a Steam Deck last late last year and got it replaced because of a lot of problems it had, including terrible backlight bleed. I just hope that Valve isn't taking those consoles that are being replaced and just throwing them in the refurbished pile, which is possible. I thought it'd be a much bigger deal people getting refurbished Steam Decks, seeing the backlight. Like, I thought it'd be a much bigger deal. I thought people would be more upset at Valve for doing that, for, for having such horrible backlight bleed uh, coming into their refurbished consoles. But I guess I didn't show it well enough in the in the video. Because, I mean, in real life, it was pretty bad. On this podcast, you saw it the worst. For some reason, this camera picked it up better than my other cameras. Anyway, Charlie Fenn says, been playing some PS2 and PS3 games on my Steam Deck recently and was thinking about what you said about remakes while playing Tomb Raider Anniversary. For me... That is still one of the best examples of a remake and such an underrated one. The character model was updated to the latest one, new dialogue added, and the la the latest actress, etc. And it just felt incredible. The levels were recognizable from Tomb Raider 1, but you had to completely rethink what you had to do in each one. As so much more was added, now that I, now that I want more of it. Now that I want more of. I... Don't remember that game. <laughs> so I don't I don't have a basis for what you're saying. That sounds cool, but I still want the ability to go back to the original. But I guess that is a different story. It sounds pretty similar to the uh Halo anniversary collection, but without the ability to go back to the original. But I think Tomb Raider Anniversary, how much, how long after the original game did that come out? Tomb Raider Anniversary was 2011? Oh, that's pretty late. No, released 2007. So that was probably like 10 years. Yeah, the original was in 1996. Okay, it's pretty decent. All right, uh, now I'll talk to you people real quick. Um, R4WS, thank you for the prime. And Burrito Gent, thank you for the prime. Yo, what am I eating? I'm Hungles. Thanks for coming back into the stream after we died, by the way. I appreciate you people. I keep saying you people, and then people like to say, what do you mean, you people? I got to stop saying that. I mean, you people. I mean, you guys. You, you, the... Fuck, fuck you guys. I'm in the chat now. Make it good. We need a Series E so that we can have the Series S, E, and X. You guys suck. I hate, I hate you guys. Bob, did you hear Hide Hidetaka Miyazaki seemingly confirmed Elden Ring 2? No. I could have told you that Elden Ring 2 was coming out. I don't think that's a surprise. It's my birthday. Oh my God, happy birthday. Will is celebrating right now. Isn't that right, Will? Oh, wait, he's not here. That's literally an Elon Musk joke. He did that with Tesla. I know. I know what it is, okay? Only good thing about the X name change is I don't accidentally open it instead of Twitch. But now I have a new problem with it being called X. I got a lot of problems with it being called X. I got, you know what? Maybe the name is the least of the problems. 
because I can just call it Twitter and people know what I'm talking about. So it's not a big deal. It's all the other bullshit, like being rate limited, uh, like not having tweet deck anymore. So I don't have a constant feed scrolling. I have to keep clicking on it. I can't just have it out of the corner of my eye like I used to. I was trying so hard to find like a Chrome extension that would do that for me. Who's a developer here? Sean, are you still here? No banana suits, are you still here? I have a request from a developer who can do a Chrome extension, and this seems like a very simple thing to do as someone who's not a developer at all. So I got this one Chrome extension that makes Twitter very minimal, gets rid of all of the bullshit on the sides, and that's great. I can just leave that tab open in a small, thin window on it, on the side of my monitor, but it doesn't auto refresh. I found some Chrome extensions that auto refresh and it does, they, they, they do it. It refreshes the whole screen and, uh, you might miss some of the things that's on the screen. What I need is a Chrome extension that can either auto scroll upwards there's a lot of chrome extensions that auto scroll downwards i need a chrome extension that will auto scroll upwards i think that will make it so when there's new tweets found on twitter it will just scroll up and that way you won't lose the tweets that were just there so if it auto because if it auto refreshes you will just lose the ones that are there and you can't go back so if it just scrolls up i think you'll be fine or the other option is you just click the more tweets. After you're on Twitter.com for a certain amount of time, a little thing will come up and say, oh, there's more tweets. Click here to scroll up. Just click that for me. Just click it. When that comes up, click. And just do that every time it comes up. Just click. That way I'll have a constant feed that's scrolling just like TweetDeck was. So that's my request for any any anybody who can make a Chrome extension. Bob, what's your opinion on Nintendo President Shuntaro Furukawa has weighed in on how the company approaches new technology? Um, I don't think this is important. While there's no particular technology we are focusing on at the moment, we are conducting research on a variety of new technologies. However, I believe the most important thing for our company is not seeking new technologies for novelty's sake, but rather considering how they can lead to revolutions in the act of play itself. The idea is that if we become convinced that incorporating a certain technology can provide customers with a fresh and surprising experience, then the then we covet its research more strongly making investments which necessary when necessary as well yeah i mean we know that nintendo likes putting gimmicks into shit and of course they're not going to think that they're gimmicks and they're going to say that there's a lot of research put into them and i'm sure that there is but you're not always going to create a revolution you're going to create a wii u every once in a while and that's what i'm concerned about for the next one so like yeah this is like this is just this is just political speak for, for hey, we, we're going to have a gimmick in the next Switch. <laughs> I can't imagine using Twitter on desktop. I want threads on. If, they, if threads did a tweet deck competitor, I'm, all, I'm completely changed over. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to stop with Twitter completely. All right. We're out of here. Thanks for joining me on this weird and wacky, you know? Uh, hopefully next time, Will will join me. <laughs> hopefully next time, there'll be, a, there'll be a person over there. Uh, and we can test out our new audio. I think it sounds pretty good. Uh, thanks for rejoining the broadcast after it went down. Uh, sorry for the technical difficulties, but uh, I do what I can. You know, I'm a one-man show over here. 
I'll be back on Thursday. I don't know what I'll be streaming. Hopefully something fun. I gotta start like a modding Game Boys. I got so many Game Boys, so much Game Boy stuff I gotta fuck around with. Nintendo Podcast is also live this week, but it won't be in this room. It'll be at, at my desk. That makes my life a lot easier. Uh, that'll be on Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern on youtube.com slash at Nintendo Podcast. That same day in the morning on this Thursday, I will have a video out. There's a lot of content with me in it going out this week. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us, says Will in the chat. You're not allowed to say that. You're all, you're off tonight. Go watch Wood. Uh, I just I just wrote Raid Wolfden. <laughs> all right. Go watch Wood. He's streaming, talking about how he was hacked the other day. Because he opened he he opened the exe file in a Discord message. Thanks for being here. Hopefully I don't have to do this again. If you enjoyed it, uh, let me know. If you didn't, I don't care. Because I'm I don't want I don't want to have to do this again. Uh all right, bye. <laughs>